around guys. So yesterday we worked on the SR20 for the S14 and uh, we were going to do some more on that but uh, we just found out that our local track is having their first test in tune tomorrow, right? Tomorrow? Yeah. And we're going to see if we can bring the hatch. I don't know if we'll be able to make it in time but uh, we're going to try. So we need to get some more things done. I still need to put these dimple dive plates on so we're going to do that right now just to get that over with. I already went ahead and got this one cleaned up. It's ready to be welded on. I had to like grind some of these edges off right here to follow the curvature of the windshield outline right here. So this side's ready to be welded on. And then I just have to grind that one down to get it ready. And then we're gonna get those welded on. Hopefully we can see if we can find a windshield by tomorrow. And then if we have time tonight, we're gonna bring it back over to PFI and Brent said he has some time to retune it because I just wanna make sure the tune's all good because I haven't really driven it in a while. So I wanna make sure everything's good before we take it over to the track. But uh, yeah, we just gotta get these welded on. And I guess we can head over there just with no windshield again. It is kind of cold out. But uh, yeah, we're gonna focus on the hatch for today. All right, so I got both of these ready to be welded on. Uh, this is just what I was talking about earlier. I had to grind uh, a bit off this left side right here so the metal wouldn't overlap uh, the outline of the windshield right here because these were perfectly square when I got them but the windshield has a slight curve to it so I had to grind the edges down to match the curve of that and uh, yeah, so I got it cleaned up. It should be ready to go. I'm just gonna be welding it to this thin little piece of metal right here once it will focus. Just gonna weld it on right there. That gap will close up a little tighter and uh, that will sit nice and underneath the windshield. I'll just do one stitch weld right there, one in the middle right here, and then one down at the bottom. And then I'll do probably three or four more stitch welds to the cage itself. And then the dimple dies will be all mounted up. And then we just gotta throw some paint on them and uh, then we can throw the windshield back on. Damn those welds though. Oh yeah, I was able to get those a little better because this one fit up nicer. Nice. I'm happy with it, that's not going anywhere. This is a little bump right here. So I got the plates welded on. Really happy with how they came out. This side was a lot easier to do than the passenger side just because this plate fit up a lot better. But the welds came out good. It was just really hard to weld on this right side right here because this metal on the car itself is really thin right over here. As you can see right here, it's starting to burn through. Uh, that's where we ground off the paint, so I had to come under it a little bit because the metal was just too thin right there. But I did get it. These are on there nice and solid, not gonna go anywhere, and I'm really happy with how they look. They look really sweet. So now that those dimple die plates are done, um, I am just gonna go and lightly grind some of these welds on this side because they were a little built up because of how cold I had to weld them to make it weld. So I'm just gonna grind those down just barely and then I'm going to throw some paint on it. Probably just gonna do like a matte black and then we'll be able to get the windshield thrown in there and then the hatch will finally have a windshield again. I was definitely slacking on the uh, dimple die plates but they are finally done. <laughs> What does that do? Uh, the phosphoric acid eats away the rust, whatever there's left of it, so that we can get it down to as bare as we can. And then we'll put some primer over it to extremely slow down the rusting process. So right oh, here. Nice. oh yeah, that's because where we yeah. shaved it down to weld the plates on right there. You should have kept the Accord. Should have built the H in it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> this thing is fucking is dope. Fucking, fucking love this car. How much does it weigh? Uh, 2250 without me in it. <laughs> yeah. 
It's fucking light, dude. Yeah, this thing is amazing. That's magic right there. Look at that sexy Z, dude. Careful. <laughs> yeah, don't get any on the zebra. <laughs> zebra prints are panty dropper right there. The two stuff doesn't oh. do it. <laughs> nah, they don't care about that. They just cover their ears, but when they get in, they're like, ooh, zebra. Yeah. <laughs> Coming back into the, the tech anyway, you gotta get used to it. Is he going back? Yeah, next month, bud. All right, guys, so I was in a bit of a rush this morning. Um, I'm getting the windshield put on right now. These guys are kind of getting it aligned into place, but uh, we got the dimple dye plates welded right before we came over here. I was in a rush because we made a last minute appointment, but we threw some paint on there and they just got the windshield on. It's looking really good and she should be done here pretty soon. And then this guy comes up to me, yeah. his name is Brandon. I did not expect you to be a fan, but right. knew who I was. Absolutely. And uh, he's working over here in the warehouse department over here at Safe Flight. Right. But uh, yeah, they were checking out the car. Glad you guys liked it. Oh yeah. But yeah, glad to have this windshield finally in there. And uh, this is taking longer than I thought it would. And since everything was like last minute, we're probably not gonna be able to make it to the track today, but I would like to get it retuned if I can today. I still need to talk to Brent. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at so far. So sorry, I was just in such a rush, so I didn't feel much of it. But the hatch does now have a new windshield. Thank you, sir. Finally has a windshield again. Now I don't have to drive with this helmet. See you, man. Later, man. See you, man. Till next time. Oh, yeah. Getting a new windshield installed on your car has to be one of the greatest feelings ever. I mean, this thing has never been so clear ever since I first bought the car. It's just, it's just so clear. I love it. And uh, something else to mention, now that the windshield is on the car and I don't have my helmet on and there's not all this wind noise, I can actually hear what's going on inside the car. Um, I can definitely hear the whining from the straight cut gear set. So I'm not even mad about it. It sounds amazing. Honestly, when you're in like second or third gear starting to get into it, it sounds like a turbine engine spooling up. It just sounds amazing and I love it. But uh, yeah, we finally have a windshield in the hatch. Now I don't gotta wear that helmet. And right now I'm on my way to PFI. I just got her chopped off on E85. I think we're gonna try to throw her on the dyno just to make sure everything is good with the tune. And then since we didn't have enough time today to go to the track, and honestly the weather wasn't even that good for it. It's been really windy out. We're gonna try to make it tomorrow if we can. The track is open tomorrow as well. And uh, yeah, just gotta make sure that tune is on point. Hopefully she does all right. But I'm really happy right now, guys. Finally have the windshield on and uh, yeah, I'm just loving the hats right now. I'm stoked. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you one little pull right here. Hopefully you can hear the sound of the transmission. It sounds amazing. Made it to PFI, got the hatch on the dyno. Brent had to do a couple tunes, but he's done with those. Yep, and then so, I just uh, got this. Aw, computer shut down. <laughs> it's all right. Damn. You might have a sad face, but I don't. So I'll swap <laughs> it. But yeah, we'll see how much you can do. If you guys remember, the last tune it did 620 uh, horsepower to the wheels, and I'm hoping for about the same power. We'll try to make like 650 if it will do it, and I'll just leave it there, and then we'll try to get it ready for the track tomorrow and just see how she does. I have some things that I'm gonna show you guys later that I'm gonna be adding on to the car and uh, we're gonna try to turn her up in the future but for right now, I'm just gonna leave it at the power it's at. And uh, yeah, see if that transmission helps with uh, better quarter mile times. I can't wait to see what mile an hour it does with this train, like what the ratios are, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it what, feels- How fast I'm gonna go in for It feels pretty good. I'm gonna know right now. Yeah, kind of we'll find out. Yeah. It is also on a 26 inch though instead of the 24. 24. You like the dimple dies? I'm freaking 
Well, I think they came out good. Yeah. They look sweet. If anyone says you don't have good line of sight, oh, probably, yeah. man, they should drive this thing. Yeah, you got plenty of room to oh, see. This, the line of sight is awesome. You ready for that RX-7 to get gapped? It's gonna make a lot more power than I do. Better get her I'll done. Just, I'll just use it you better. said start of the season, bro. I'm going tomorrow. I can't say nothing. Once it's done, it's gonna gap me in that eighth mile. Yeah. You know, if, if the converter will do it, we'll do we'll do quarter mile. You oh, see what man. she does? Yeah. Like I said, it's only gonna make so the converter's rated for like 450 horse. So it's not gonna be able to make it much over 500. So. You just warm it up? Yep. Give it up. It's cold. Yeah. It's cold out tonight. It is. Look at that graph. <laughs> Here's one fifty. Car so fast. Was that fourth? fourth gears, 150? That was fourth, yeah. Damn. I, I, and I clicked off at the shift light, not at the rev limiter. Okay. So, you hooked up your boost controller, right? But obviously, yeah. it wants more RPM, it doesn't give a shit. <laughs> it's still going. Honey bread, I don't care. Damn, look at that, bro. Look how flat it is. That's why your car's so fast. That's why she got fucking power. It just stands up and then holds yeah, the power stands all, up all the way all out. the way across, dude. The map is that flat too. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's great. Oh, let's go. It's a good power band. I don't think it's ever had that good of a power band. That's what you want. You want it to stand up and then hold the power all the way out. Was it make torque? We should have got the torque. Oh, it was hooked up. Yeah, where's the Brent? Hey, what happened to the torque thing? Uh, Click over here on the name. Okay, where do I go? Right here. Right here? Yeah. Torque. 482 torque. It's not even bad. So I just did 620 on. 22 PSI? 22 pounds, yep. And next one we're gonna just go 24 PSI. 24 pounds. Try to get it right at yeah. like that 650 range. Yep. She'll be yeah. set right there for tomorrow. Yeah, it'll be set great for there. And then uh, pull out all the stops. Hell oh, yeah, once we get that that fuel system. Yeah. Gotta crank her up pounds. a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Probably do an exhaust housing too. Oh so yeah, we need that bigger exhaust doesn't housing. Fall so bad. But do you think? Power do you good. think with that exhaust housing, it'll still do quite a bit more? Obviously, I mean, we did 730 yeah, I, yeah, in the I van. Think, I think they were running out of steam at 30 pounds. Well, we'll push her till she can't breathe anymore. Yeah. But with a big AR, we can go 40. <laughs> That's a party. Yeah. On a stock block, piston a rod motor. Delusional. This is, this is even sleep. Delusional. Delusional. Stock block, no way. No way. You're delusional. <laughs> Bro, no, it's only making Man, 350. I forgot about that, guys. It's you only have to add him right here. <laughs> delusional. <laughs> it's only three. It's only making 350. Your dino's, your yeah, dino's yeah. whack. Yeah, that's all right. We'll we'll see how you mile an hour. Yep. <laughs> With the tranny that actually shifts. Yeah. Yeah, I'm stoked. It feels really good. Yeah. Like, you, I, can I, you feel it? Yeah. It shifts oh, good, huh? Good. I'm so excited for it. Really good, really out. Finally have. A transmission that's not just out of a junkyard with 200k miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
right guys well got some bad news so <laughs> that last clip ended early and there is some smoke coming out of the exhaust and she did not make any boost that pool and it's because the eBay turbo finally died on us so not sure how well you can see it but the fins started rubbing on the inside of the compressor wheel right there and uh, now she has quite a bit of play if I spin it you can kind of hear it's spinning pretty rough so what happened was is it probably just started spooling up and then it just got sideways and wedged itself and uh, just made no boost yeah so uh, there was some stuff I didn't film we were trying to make more pulls after it made the 644 because when it did the first 644 pull it was a little laggy at first and then the power came on when we did the first two pulls when it made 610 and 620 it was perfect it came on fast and held the power just like it should and then once it made the 640 um, we kept having some issues after that pull and we were messing with the boost controller we changed that out we even put the leak tester the smoke tester on it to see if there are any boost leaks we we're just trying to chase any problems we could find because it was starting to act all weird yeah and uh we, we went for that everything. last pool yeah, yeah we were, everything was good we were running through it all we thought we found a big air leak in the throttle body so i thought maybe that was what was causing it to spool slower i thought maybe we pushed the seal out so we tinkered around with all that and then yeah just that, that last pull yeah something happened so i don't know what went wrong i don't know if it's just the turbo itself because it's being ebay but i motivation. yeah i don't know if something yeah. was up with the oil because i did let jeremy borrow my uh 90 fitting and restrictor and i did just put that on today to get my car running again so i did just take it off and i looked through it it didn't look like there was anything in it that was like clogging it up so Really not sure, but, but the turbo she's open, right? What? Like the turbo sat open with no fitting on it for a while. Yeah, the turbo the did just sit in my garage with no fitting. Yeah. So like, cool. dust could have got yeah, in there, like. Yeah, or metal shavings were grinding something. Oh yeah, honestly. So it's like, maybe that's where this all really stemmed from because, really, this doesn't just happen, you know. And dude, so, it was going so strong, and then yeah. all of a sudden, when I take it off. Yeah. The first day I put it all back right. together, something happens. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, so we no, we haven't I don't know. I still have any issues. And then the way it was lighting, like the first pull, it was like it lit hard. And all yeah. it did was start to adjust our boost level and things just weren't there again. So it started to make, we, we used to, we were trying to put more boost to it and we're making the same power. So things were on its way, things were on their way out. Yeah. yeah, and that sucks, but as you guys know, I've put this car through a lot of abuse and that turbo has been on there for about three years now and the last three years of its life, it has been making 450 horsepower and up and every time I drive the car, I beat the crap out of it. And I know you guys watch the videos and I talk up these eBay turbos a lot and I still have a lot of faith in them yeah so i don't know what happened here but she did finally die unfortunately so that kind of sucks i still do plan on trying to race the car tomorrow i got three other cars at home with the same turbo so don't think that's going to be yeah. an issue so what i'm going to do is leave the hatch here overnight and brent's going to drop me off because i don't want to try to drive it home because that wheel is bouncing up or bouncing up and down and i don't want the blade to explode and send shrapnel everywhere so i'm just gonna leave it here overnight i'll probably pull the turbo off the minivan for right now and i'll just get a new one ordered and then because the minivan doesn't even have third gear right now and it's just sitting so i'll just borrow the turbo off the van most likely and see if we can make it tomorrow but uh we got nines yeah to what's up we got nines to run. yeah we got nines to run <laughs> but i mean she made 644 we had to turn her up that one extra PSI. That's what I, I was like. Let's go a little more. Yeah, that's all right. Damn. Well, we found a little issue with the boost on it too, and we found out we got a little throttle body air leak. I mean, we found some problems, so it's better to happen right here than at the track or yeah, at least spending a whole day. At least it happened at the dyno. To chase something, yeah. On the dyno, that's what it's for. Yeah, and the motor should be good. All that oil or all that smoke was just oil because once that shaft starts flexing like that the seals are going to start pushing out inside of it 
So it was just burning oil. I did start the car again and just let it idle and gave it some little revs and it's not smoking at all. But if you start to rev it up a lot and get that turbo spinning, you'll start to puff some smoke. But uh, yeah, that's how tonight went. Was looking good, but it's racing. eBay turbo came to an end. Yep. That's just Couldn't life. Anybody's turbo, honestly. Yeah. I think it's just oil starvation. So. Oh well, rest in peace to the eBay turbo. <laughs>